Okay, welcome to part five of this set of tutorials. Uh, we've got our layout, or the structure for our layout, kind of built. Again, we're using tables. I've just stacked four tables on top of themselves. Uh, four really simple tables. The, the first one is just one by one. The second one is also one row, one column. The third table is one row, two columns, to give me these, these two separate areas here. And the last one is a one by one table. Uh, now we've put this content in, or we've put this structure in, to give us these sort of five general regions. Header, horizontal nav, left nav, content area, and footer. Um, <clears throat> now it looks okay in Dreamweaver when we're looking at it, but we're really not getting a good idea of what it looks to our visitors. Um, so we need to be checking this in the browser. So the traditional way is to go up to the uh, this little button here across the top, the preview and browser button, choose the browser you want to look at it in, do a preview in browser, and Dreamweaver sends, let me just pull this over here, Dreamweaver sends that your HTML document out to the whatever browser you choose, and you can take a look and see what things are looking like so far. So, uh, it looks a lot different when we see it in the browser, and the reason for that is you, can, you can't tell where the cells are of these tables. Um, and that's going to make it hard for the visitor who comes and just visually wants to be able to see these main regions. Of course the, the, the title or the header region is pretty obvious because we put a big graphic in there. Um, but the other four regions, my horizontal navigation, my left column, my content column, and my footer all kind of blend together. Uh, and it might be hard for my visitor to really get a handle on um, on those big areas. I want to make it just visually obvious what those different regions are. <clears throat> and we're going to do that just by using a little bit of color. So let me go back into Dreamweaver. Um, oh, one other thing while I'm while I'm here, you can preview out in the browser like that all the time, which is uh, always a good thing to do before you ever upload or publish anything, but sometimes it gets tiresome. In CS4, uh, Dreamweaver added this great button up here called Live View. And if I click on that, um, Dreamweaver switches a bit here and it lets me see uh, my page rendered out as it would be in the browser. So, you know, I might, I might just use that Live View um, as I'm working and then um, every so often actually go out to Firefox or to Safari or to Internet Explorer and really check it out. But um, Live View might make it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. Um, so you can just toggle that on and off. And one other thing, while you're in Live View, you can still edit um, just like normal. You're just not seeing the uh, some of the other properties there. Again, this design view, you want to think of it kind of as a word processor. Um, you want to change something, you highlight it or select it and then change its properties. Okay, I'm going to go back just to the normal editing view here. And I mentioned we're just going to use um, color uh, to help us define our regions. Now I set set these four tables onto a background uh, and the background back here you can see is white and by default all these tables don't have any background so we're actually just seeing through them onto the white background. So I'm going to start by picking uh, a background color uh, for this where this white is. Just something to offset it a little bit and again I'm going to be I want it to be very subtle maybe just a light gray for now and we might come back and change it once we get a color scheme going. Um, but uh, down in the property bar here you'll see a button called page properties. That same button also shows up up here under modify and page properties. So I'm going to just select that and here I can choose a background color. So for now I am just going to pick um, kind of a light gray color to sit back there and if I want to check out to see what that's really going to look like before I commit to it, I can press apply and it fills in the color and I can see that, yep, those tables were all um, transparent. I was just seeing through them. Uh, so for now, I think that light gray, I know it's a little boring, but we're just going to uh, say OK and let that stay. Um, then I want to put background color inside of each one of these columns. So the main one that I'm most worried about here is this content area, the, 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 the cell that's going to have text that I'm expecting my visitor to, to read. Um, I want that to be as easy as possible to read, so I'm going to make uh, it have a white background with uh, black text. So I'm going to just click inside there and uh, go down to the property bar 
And you can see right now I'm sort of sticking with sort of the old school HTML. So I have that HTML button selected. Uh, in a later tutorial, we'll, we'll work on the, the CSS. But right now, I'm just going to use HTML and come down to the cell properties. You can see right in the middle here, there's a, there's a, you can see the BG, and right next to it is a little button. This is like a little color picker or a little palette button. So, or a color well, maybe you could call it. So I'm going to click on that. And once I click on that, I get this palette that comes up, and I can select a color off of it. And I'm just going to pick white, so that fills that one in. Okay, so I want that to be white. Uh, and now I'm going to just put a background color inside of each of these other cells. And uh, all I have to do is click inside of them, come down to my property bar, find that same background color chip down here or button, select it. Now I can select off this palette, which is kind of a limited palette. Um, <clears throat> but if you notice, my cursor has turned into an eyedropper. You can see it there, and as I roll over different colors, it's sampling those colors. So I can sample off that palette that comes up, but I could also come up and sample off of my document. So if I was trying to match colors up here, um, I possibly could come up here and say, you know, I'd like to use sort of this light tan color that's in the building to kind of tie my background colors in with my banner graphic. Now, my banner graphic is almost monochromatic, um, so this is probably not a great example, but you can see when I put my uh, cursor, which is now the eyedropper, over a color up on my page, down there uh, in uh, that palette that popped up, you can see the color that I'm over. It's showing me that color, and if I click on it now, it will sample that color and use it as the background. Okay, so maybe I want this to match a little bit, so I'm going to uh, uh, use that same color here for the footer. So if I click inside of my footer, and I don't even have to try to remember what color that was, I can just come down and click on the background color selector and just sample the color out of that other cell, and then they'll be exactly the same. Okay, so now I've got those done, and I probably should have a, a background color here behind my uh, this left-hand column. So same thing, going to click inside of that column, grab the color picker, and uh, I'm just going to see if I can't sample a little bit of this red brick color. Just to have something optional here, and you know later I think I'll come back and work on a little better color scheme. But sample that off. Okay, so I'm going to save those changes. Um, and let's preview it in the browser again and see how it looks with these colors now. All right, so just by adding a little bit of color or background color, I think it's changed the look of it uh, substan substantially. Now, if my visitor were to come, just visually, they can easily identify, easily identify my primary regions that I've set up. So they can quickly see where the navigation is and how that, that horizontal navigation there, this bit right up here, is separate from the content area so they're not going to get mixed up. Also, it's obvious that this is a footer down here because it's just separated just by using color. So a really nice, easy way uh, to separate things out. So that's, um, that's probably okay for now. The other thing that I'm wondering about is, notice I made my tables uh, 770 pixels wide, and I guess, again, that's not a magic number, it's just a common number. Uh, but because I made all four tables the same width, they are lining up uh, nice and clean down this right-hand side. But there is a big margin out over here. My monitor is set to about uh, 1,024, I believe, and so that those extra couple of hundred pixels uh, are showing up out here on the right because the default alignment for all my stuff is to the left. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of margin. There's some default margin along the left and a default margin along the top. But if I want this to be centered, um, you know, so that I don't have one big margin, but I have an equal margin on either side, I've got to go back to Dreamweaver to do that. So um, here's how, if I, I'm not saying you need to do this, but this is just an option for you to do. So to have all my contents content center, you want to be kind of thinking about thinking about how a word processor works to center something in a word processor. You need to get it all selected, and then you look for um, a center button or uh, an item on a menu to center. So I need to get all of this content selected. The best way to do that is to come down to this little HTML trail that I mentioned earlier. And you can see that I have um, you know, the table tag, the TR tag, the body tag, it's the body tag that is actually 
everything that's visible on the page. I'm going to click body and you'll see everything becomes highlighted. That means it's all selected. Okay, and now I just need to um, find where I can tell this uh, to be centered. So I'm going to use CSS this time because they've kind of moved this to CSS. Um, so down here on the properties bar, I've clicked the CSS button and if you look along uh, over here, I can see just a button for a line to center. Select that. And I think I got it. Okay. So let's go and save that and now preview it in the browser again and see what we've got. Okay, so not quite. All right, in the next tutorial, um, I'm going to wrap this one up. We'll sort that out and make sure we know how to center our entire website on the page. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.